working on this um, large rose. I posted it some days ago online and I talked about it. So today I'm actually having a practical one and I thought I should show you live how I achieved it. My name is Valerie, Valerie from Banissimo Fashion School. Uh, yes, of course we're online again just to teach you one or two things. Okay, so I'm going to go into a little bit uh, detail of how I actually got this. But before I go into that, where are you watching from? Are you watching from Lagos, Abuja? Let me know in the comments box. And um, yes, if you have questions, um, Esther is the one behind the camera today, not Chisum this time around. Chisum is doing something else somewhere. Okay, but as we are online, anything you want to ask Esther, please let Esther know she will get in touch with me. Yes, so I have this lovely blue fabric that I'm working on, and um, we're about finishing doing the finishing touches, and the design of it is a very large rose. Those of you who have followed me in the past few months saw this white and black design I made where I had this very large rose in front of me. I had so many questions as to how did you do it? What exactly did you add? Where did you get the material from? Everything, all that detail I'll be telling you today. Before I get into that, Tina, do you have your phone? The picture I give you, the design, I want to show. Yes, just let me open that page. So I can show them exactly what we're working on, and uh, we're making a replica of the design that I'm about to show you shortly. While she gets that, um, do you have any questions? Like I was saying, okay. So the materials you need for this particular practicals, first of all, is scuba material. Tailor, no die fabric. First law in fashion design. Tailor, know thy fabric. When you know what kind of fabric you're working with, it's easy to manipulate your fabric perfectly well. We're working with scuba fabric. And first of all, what are the properties of scuba fabric? It's thick, it's stretchy, it's, um, it comes in various colors, and you can manipulate it because of the thickness. You can manipulate it into any shape or any form you want. Okay, those are the qualities of scuba. Now, here's the design I'm making a replica of, of. Yes, I'm making a replica of this particular design, but we're making it with a blue fabric this time around. Okay, so now let's work on that rose. Remember the law I first of all told you? I said, tailor, know thy fabric. When you know your fabric, it's easy to work with. The reason why I mentioned that is, imagine if you have to do that rose, with this kind of fabric it will come out but the finishing touches might not be as perfect as the way a scuba would come out for you also imagine you want to make it with an ankara heavily colored ankara it will come out but the effect might not be as wonderful as when you make it with a plain fabric so those are the things you need to consider when you're working on uh, a design like this. Now let's go. For this one, we did a very long strip. I cut out a very long strip. When I mean a long strip, so if I can you give me a paper, please let me the paper. Let me quickly show you what exactly I did. Okay, I cut a long paper and I'll get a viral as well. Thanks. Okay. So what I did is I cut a long strip. Now when I mean a long strip, I'm talking about I cut a flounce. The way you cut a flounce, that's how you actually need to get this particular rose. So I cut a long strip out of the flounce. Now when we did that flounce, we now piped the edge thick enough to be able to pass in our bony. Yes, this is what I mean by a flounce. The flounce I'm talking about, this is what we did. So imagine this is my whole fabric right now. I simply did something like this. Up with here now because it's already on a curve, already it's easy to bring out the shape I want. 
So this is assuming it's my fabric now that I'm working on that I'm cutting out already. So we did this for a very big fabric. So you can see the strip is already coming out like that. Fantastic. Somebody help you with bony there. Please, this bony around. Sorry, baby. Help you with bony, that white substance there. Okay? So, I have my long strip. This is what I'm calling a strip. Yes. So imagine we cut this fabric looking like this already, first of all. Then the next step was, we simply folded it thick enough to be able to pass in these elements. And this element is what we call the bony. This element is what we call the bony. So, now, this one comes in various sizes. There is a thicker one, there are the lighter ones. So depending on what you want to do, um, there are the tiny versions. You can actually have the very, very tiny. Days. You want a call crino line, well, it's very tiny. It seems like quarter of this one. They put it in baby dresses, okay? You see it in lots of baby dresses. So that's a form of body as well. But this is the size I used, okay? So you press that down the edges, thick enough, big enough to be able to pass through this element. Once you're done with that, you pass the element through. Now you have your element with the bony placed together. Then you start picking it one by one and tacking it down. So I was in the process of doing this when I decided, ah, a lot of people have been asking me this question, let me show them how I did it. Now, you want to set it in such a way that you do as you want anyway, so as much as you big or as small, those are the things you work on. Okay? So now I go in and start picking it as I desire. When I say I'm picking it, it simply means that I'm doing like pleats or gathers inside it to form that pleat. So that one is placed already. You see the excess on this side again, I pick another small point, tack that down. Okay. Because it's at the back, it won't be a problem. That's sorted out. Push my needle through the next stage. 